This is the first in a series of videos on the SIG200. Today we're looking at the Ethernet IP variant, 1089.796 is the part number. Here you can see there are a number of ports, uh, S1 through S4 for connecting devices, and then a couple of different ports. Two ports for the Ethernet TCP IP or Ethernet IP connection. Each one of the ports has a digital output and a digital input. Um, pins 2 and 4 and then that is further detailed on the side there uh, of the device um, look at the IO link port there where uh, the digital inputs on pin 2 and the configurable input output is on pin 4 so let's go ahead and get some power to this device uh, we'll plug in a power cable onto the power port and then the USB uh, configuration cable onto the configuration port. Once that is done, we can throw the switch and uh, turn on the power, uh, 24 volts nominal to this um, device, and the LED at the power uh, port right there will light up green, as you can see, and then you know the device is booting up. It does take a few minutes to boot up, so be patient with it. Uh, you will start seeing other lights blinking as this device fully powered up and booted up and ready to connect to. Next thing to do is connect with SOPUS since this is a fresh device and I do not know the IP address. I'm just connected to it with USB and so SOPUS uses the USB search settings and will find the device that way. You can connect with a browser, but since I don't know the IP address, I have to go into the device settings and check and or set the IP address as well. So we're going to get into that here shortly. Double click on the icon, pulls up the configuration page of the device, which looks just exactly the same way if you use the browser you get the same window. So in order to make any changes, you need to use the Edit Pencil, which is in the upper right-hand corner right next to the Help icon there in the menu. And first thing we're going to do here today is go ahead and restore back to the factory settings. So we all kind of start at the same place in terms of the settings. So let's do that. And so he says I'm not allowed to do that. I have to log in on the maintenance level. That's M-A-I-N and log in. Now I should be able to restore the factory settings. Just hit OK. All other settings are clear. The default is a boot P addressing mode, and I want to change that to static address and go ahead and apply that. This way the IP address will stay when you reboot the device and so if you want to connect by TCP IP you have to now reboot the device. There's the firmware level 1.4 you should be there here in 2022 you should be at 1.4 in April. So it's kind of a nice graphic um, good information here kind of details the serial number firmware level etc etc Ethernet IP settings we're not going to use in this particular uh, session, but there they are in all their glory. So in the next section, we're going to be wiring a WTV4 to the port 1 and creating some logic. See you then.